the moment I opened the Quran, even from the first page that I read, something inside me just said that this is the truth. You cannot deny that, the, that this is the truth. It was so convincing. It was as if Allah was speaking to me directly. Uh, and this is coming from a background of no religiosity at all. Like I, I considered myself an agnostic at the time. Uh, it's, it's just, it's sent by Allah. It is sent by Allah. There's, uh, there's no other explanation. I was once in an interfaith um, dialogue in which the MC was a, a pastor, a minister in the church. A young boy, Hafiz, recited some verses of the Quran from memory. Uh, when the boy sat down, the MC got up and he said, he said, we as Christians, when we hear the Quran being recited, know that this is not the word of man. This cannot be the word of man. And then he said, it sends shivers uh, up my spine or up our spine when we hear the Quran being recited. And this is nothing new. On one occasion, the Prophet ﷺ goes to the Haram, to Mecca, and he begins to recite Surah Al-Najm out loud before everybody. He continues on reciting this beautiful and very powerful in meaning Surah until he reaches the last section of the Surah. The narration it mentions that after the Prophet ﷺ recited this verse, all of the people in the Haram, the believers, with the Prophet ﷺ, with the mushrikeen that were opposed to him, they fell down in sujood before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They couldn't help it. They realized firsthand, they experienced it. It is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an incapacitates creation from producing anything like it. You cannot imitate the Qur'an. You can't produce something like the Qur'an. And in fact, in three different places in the Qur'an, Allah challenges creation to produce something like the Qur'an. When they couldn't meet this challenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the challenge a bit more easier. فَأْتُوا بِعَشْرِ سُوَرٍ then at least bring 10 chapters, like the chapters of the Qur'an al And given that they cannot produce even 10 surah of the Qur'an, he minimizes that challenge to even produce one surah of the Qur'an. And we know that one surah of the Qur'an is as short as just a few words. The shortest chapter is Surah Al-Kawthar. It consists of three verses. In it, there's around 10 words. The scholars, they say, even in this short surah, there are six words out of the 10 that are not mentioned anywhere else in the Qur'an except in this surah. That's just another example of the miraculous nature of the Qur'an al -Karim. How do we know the Qur'an is divinely sent from God? Um, how do I know the Qur'an is divinely sent from, from God? In the early or mid-1990s, Australia was very lucky, or the Muslim community was very lucky and fortunate to have a visit by Professor Zaghloul Al-Najjar. Subhanallah, um, I had the chance to transcribe one of his lectures and I basically memorized um, the scientific miracles that he spoke of when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ And it was as if it was an oil-painted rose. You know, we didn't know what that meant decades ago, but now we know that when we look up into the sky, the night sky, we can see an oil-painted rose in the night sky, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so beautifully described in the Quranic verses. The other verses, of course, was Wal Bahri al Masjur and the ocean set on fire. And again, when the first people who heard these verses were addressed, they did not know that there were literally fires under the ocean, the magma oozing out of the earth's crust. And of course, the miracles of the embryo, how it is created, all of those verses confirmed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sent down the Qur'an as a guidance for all of mankind. It's also got some amazing insights into the ancient past. The Qur'an mentions that the people of Abraham worshipped the sun, the moon, and a third celestial object. Recent archaeological discoveries have shown that the people of this region did indeed worship an astral triad of the sun, the moon, and Venus. Now this knowledge was lost for thousands of years 
It was only rediscovered recently in the 20th century. Chapter 10 of the Quran makes the claim that the Pharaoh of Moses was drowned in the sea and that his body will be preserved as a sign for future generations. Historically, Egyptian priests hid the body of Ramesses II, who was the Pharaoh of Moses, in a secret location until it was rediscovered in the year 1881 CE. Today, the mummy is on display in the Cairo Museum. So, how is it possible that the author of the Quran had access to such knowledge? <laughs> See, this is like something I, when I started my, of my journey, you know, I always knew, and as a Muslim, this is what you're, you're told. Uh, the Quran is the word of God and it's a linguistic miracle. And it just takes a lot of effort in terms of once you reach a certain level of Arabic and you've tasted Arabic, especially Arabic outside the Quran, you get a feel for like how the Quran is so different to all other Arabic. One example that the scholars give, they say in one verse of the Quran al Karim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in this one verse, two commands, two prohibitions, and two glad tidings are given. All of these six things are mentioned in just one verse. Now you try put a sentence together, just one sentence that mentions all of those six things, it is very, very hard. And if you are able to, it won't be as eloquent, as beautiful as the Quran al Karim. And then we look at the miraculous aspects of word choice and positioning. For instance, we take Surah Yasin. Allah tells us in Surah Yasin, وَكُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ and every one of them, meaning those celestial objects, the sun, the moon, the earth, and the rest of the objects in the solar system and in the universe is in its own orbit swimming. If we read from beginning to end, and if we read it from the end to the beginning, it is exactly the same letters. So in this part of the ayah, that message is literally represented visually in order for us to see that floating and orbit and swimming with the letters themselves. So it, it, it's, it's hard to, to describe. You can talk about specific techniques that are used in the Quran and, and, and so forth, but just like the fact that it's, it's a book that I've spent hours and hours on, but there's still so much more and I know that it's an ocean that I can keep diving into. So that's, that, that for me tells me that, you know, this can't just be you know, any, any book or it's, it's, not, it's not the word of man.